Welcome back everyone to our third and final part of our three video series about our landscaping projects at our cabin in the Canadian Rockies. If you haven't had the chance to watch the first two episodes, there will be a couple of end screen links at the end of this video if you want to check out our projects from the beginning. We start this episode with a nice fly over the magnificent Blaeberry Valley near the town of Golden in British Columbia. Then we fly over our property with a bird's eye view of the informal gardens and wildflower meadows that we have created followed by a few short clips of the landscaping features. We will then take you on a quick tour around our cabin for a more in-depth look at what we have done. Thank you everyone for your wonderful comments in the previous clips and thank you for your support. It is hard to describe the beauty of the surroundings and mountain landscapes around a property in the Blaeberry Valley. So along with one of my favorite quotes from the 19th century Scottish-born American naturalist and mountaineer John Muir, and some of the videos that I have filmed during our landscaping projects for the past few weeks, I hope you enjoy the gorgeous views as much as we do. Here is a quote, the mountains are calling and I must go, unquote. This is week three, actually week four. Uh, we only got a few days before we go back home, so this is what we've done with the place. <coughs> so we've uh, pretty much finished all the garden beds. Most plants have survived. There's just only a couple that uh, obviously deers uh, a little bit of a nibble on, but I mean, that's to be expected. Um, they don't read the menu usually, but uh, it's only like uh, small plants that we weren't sure whether they were going to be deer resistant, but obviously they weren't. Um, although, I'm still sort of uh, on the fence on that one because we've got um, rabbits 
as well and ground squirrels so it could be any of them it's a nice little butterfly there on the one of the wildflowers there but otherwise it has been okay so we've got a little sitting area that will be actually quite nice mid spring mid autumn mornings with the full sun so that will be that will help a bit um, yeah, so. made the garden beds to actually include the maples that we uh, planted last October and some of the crab apple trees this side here we decided to keep it as a trimmed uh, meadow we did plant a few things though um, chiefly some um, geopie weeds and some venustas they get pretty big so it'll fill up that area and at the back there uh, we have some um, aspens too as well so we'll put a couple of aspens just to give it a bit of uh, definition um, cherry trees are still doing pretty well crab apple eh, they're getting there as well it's their first year so I guess they're getting their feet all together uh, we've, I've done most of the irrigation in there too as well so they are getting water especially of late it's been quite warm here and for British Columbia uh, like July August you get you know late 20s early 30s uh, centigrade or Celsius I should say and um, that's about 85 to 90 in Fahrenheit so it does get quite warm and dry we haven't had any sort of meaningful rainfalls since we've been here it's been nearly four weeks so yeah so we've uh, as you can see we've uh, done everything manually actually uh, except for that little part here one of my neighbors was kind enough to come in with this little bobcat and just uh, spread the rest of the gravel but uh, everything that you see here has been done with good old elbow grease and uh, and a cart well barrow type of thing so yeah it's taken us about three weeks so yeah we've uh, done a little path here that goes to the seating area over there actually we'll just walk there there's some interest here uh, we got the uh, hummingbird feeder in there and he actually loves it it's we <laughs> filled it this morning it's almost half empty um, but he loves the bee balm or the monadas there in there actually I will put some footage that uh, Karen has taken the other day that was actually absolutely amazing absolutely loves those uh, bee balm or monada as they're called so we've planted a few in there so that's pretty good uh, these are the atris so they are quite a pretty flower too as well and the bumblebee absolutely love them um, there we did uh, a little bit of uh, landscaping my mother-in-law uh, always wanted a uh, wagon wheel so we thought we'd shadow wagon wheel as she's not able to travel so there you go Kathy it's a nice little wagon wheel there yeah we planted some baptisia there um, so hopefully next year everything will come up again um, in here we got some agastaches or agastakis hyssop so they're doing well some barberry bushes here we got some sparia oh yeah 
just we are in a zone three zone four area so got a plan for for the zone it's a bit of a <laughs> little bit of a, uh, a, di a different planting that we're doing here than uh, back home in australia as we live in the tropics so basically we plant all all year it doesn't really matter here well yeah but be careful so they can take uh, the minus 20 minus 25 that they get regularly in winter so hmm. oh, we got a little bird bath too as well um, we thought we'll try it but uh, the American Robins um, came in for a bath this morning so it was really cute um, and this morning we came in there was no water in there so I guess the deers are coming for a bit of a drink so okay we'll just go around so yeah. Shot of the house here. Oh, that's the garden door, so going on the veranda. Um, it's a bit hot in summer on that veranda because it's uh, due west, so obviously we get the afternoon sun. Uh, what we've done here since uh, I filmed last time is uh, Made some borders so uh, pretty much to stop uh, the flowers and the weeds invading the path. Uh, so, yeah, so Karen made a little secret garden there, and last night we had dinner there, that was pretty good. That was actually awesome. Yeah, so we kept some of the meadow areas obviously for the pollinators um, obviously when we first came in about three three and a half, half week <laughs> three three and a half weeks ago um, it was largely overgrown um, so we just tidied it up uh, as you can see uh, most of the most of our land is still meadows and stuff like that so uh, there's no problem there uh, and next year i will tackle like the septic field uh, where we are going to plant uh, more wildflowers so it'll become a little bit like that now since i filmed last time uh, the daisies are now almost all spent uh, the uh, thistles are, are well still going and they've been a royal pain in our behind so yeah uh, there's some nice little coreopsis coming out so it's their time to shine there's also some uh, sweet white clover and some also I'm pretty sure there's some yellow clover too as well over there Is uh, the shed that uh, our contractor built for us? Uh, so everything has been finished, and uh, yeah, it's actually some nice views from there. Um, don't know if I filmed that last time, so might as well show you. So if you sit here, you have some wonderful views of uh, Goat Mountain, as it is known. It's pretty cool. It's pretty relaxing too. Here's the other side of the house. Oh 
it's just like more of a shady part of the garden so we planted some astilbes and uh, there's a peony there too as well there's some sedums and it gets uh, the morning sun um, so there's no problem there and that's a monk's hood like uh, as you can see the uh, bees absolutely love it I absolutely love it so. Sorry if it's a bit dark, but uh, yeah, it is quite a shady area. And uh, there it's a bit more exposed, so just plenty of some annuals and uh, I think there's some um, African daisies there and some marigolds. Yeah, the bleeding heart is just loving it there, just no problem there. Uh, peony as well. Sorry, I've got a March fly trying to get me, but uh, yeah, not anymore. Uh, that little Japanese maple, a um, bit of an experiment. See if it survives the winter. I doubt it. But anyway. Anyway, so back on the path and. Um, I got sidetracked before, so I'm going on the right track now. So I've stopped here with the track. Next year, like I said, like this is a septic field. So at the moment it looks like a little bit uh, untidy to say the least. So next year we're going to come back here in late May, early June. So uh, obviously there won't be too much grass to deal with. And uh, yeah, we'll sow some... Uh, wildflower seeds so by July August everything should come up the first year we won't get too much but the second year should uh, uh, yield some results but that's about it so there you go yeah so oh yeah uh, as you can see I've got all the hoses and irrigation on top of the mulch pretty much um, because the season is so short, it's only about four months. And then uh, from the 15th of May to about the last week of September, it's fine. After that, it's frost and extreme cold. So we'll just uh, roll up all the hoses and all the irrigation stuff um, and um, deploy them again in the spring to next year.